If you're considering joining Real Broker, but you're on the fence because you've heard that they offer revenue share as a way that their agents can make passive income if they choose to participate in that portion of their real estate business, and you're just not sure how you feel about that, you're asking yourself those questions like, is this a pyramid scheme model? Is it a multi-level marketing model? If that's you, this video is for you. I am going to be sharing something that is extremely, extremely important for you to know um, before you join Real Broker at the very, very end. Please do not join Real Broker until you hear this last part. You do not want to miss anything in today's video. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Mariah and I make videos on this channel every week. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell. I've been a licensed real estate agent since 2015. A couple years after getting licensed, my husband Spencer quit his job and joined me. We have been a husband and wife real estate team ever since. I myself joined Real Broker a year and a half ago now after saying I would never, ever, ever in my career switch real estate brokerages. I was with the same brokerage for eight years and I especially always said I will never, ever switch to a cloud-based brokerage. I hated them. They had a very bad taste in my mouth and part of it was because of this, um, not just because they were cloud-based, I didn't like that, but um, part of it, part of the reason why I really did not like cloud-based brokerages was because of this very thing that we're going to be talking about today. Um, I thought that it was a MLM type thing. So let's get into this. What is a pyramid scheme? The actual definition of that, it is a illegal thing in the US and it is 100% recruiting based. So basically they reward their participants for recruiting others to join their company, whatever it is. So that answers that question really quick. We know it's not a pyramid scheme, but is it an MLM? Because I know, uh, I always thought like I, I am telling you, I always thought that cloud-based brokerages were just like MLM companies. And I thought it was the same business model. I just thought it was a really, really quite honest, like disgusting business model that I didn't want to have any part of, um, which is ironic because I now sponsor agents into this company often and participate in this business model. So is it an MLM? Was I right? Was I wrong? That's what we're going to talk about. What is a MLM multi-level marketing company. So just to give a couple examples, there's Mary Kay, uh, Amway, there's, we've all heard of these companies. Basically what an MLM is, is they sell a product. They have a product to sell. Their distributors get commission. Uh, they get paid for recruiting people to the company, if that makes sense. So it is legal in the US, it is real broker along with uh, EXP, Keller Williams, the other, the many, many, many other real estate brokerages in 2024 that offer this revenue share model. Are they MLMs? Let, we're going to get into this. We're going to dissect it. We're going to talk about the pros and the cons of this business model. We're really going to get into it. But first, I want to hear your opinions. I always love chatting with you guys in the comment section. So leave a comment. Let me know right now. What do you think of this business model? Does it give you the ick like it gave me for so many years? Or do you see the pros of it? Do you, do you like it? Do you think it's an MLM? What do you think? Now let's get into it. Real Broker is a real estate brokerage first and foremost. They do offer rev share as a form for um, a way for their agents to to make passive income and there are agents who from this revenue share alone are making hundreds of thousands of dollars every month passively from their revenue share um, from their network however it is a uh, something that's, that's important to know before we really get into this and discuss it R real broker is a real estate brokerage that is their that is their business model is that is what their training is about if you were to go on to the workplace real academy where we have our trainings it is not going to be recruitment heavy like recruit agents to our company bring them in do a script like no the training is telling agents how to sell more houses how to just overall do a really really great job for your clients and i think it's interesting actually that I heard a statistic was it only 13% of all agents at Real Broker have anybody in their downline. I hate the word downline. Let's say network, whatever. They they don't they don't like that word at Real. Like you don't even they don't even say the word downline. 13% um, of agents. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. I believe have somebody in their network at Real Broker. So it is not a brokerage that is recruitment heavy, trying to push this on people, trying to force everyone to become recruiters. That is not 
their goal. But we have more to talk about, so don't go anywhere. Before we can actually determine is this a MLM or not, we need to talk about what is revenue share? Why did, why did they offer it? Let's get into that a little bit. So most real estate brokerages, they are going to have a pretty big fund, a pretty hefty fund that is their marketing fund. Or they're going to pay you know, people that are like designated recruiters to go recruit agents to their company or whatever, um, or their principal broker will do that. But at Real Broker, there is none of that. They do not have a marketing fund at all. So you're not gonna see uh, spendy Super Bowl commercials advertising Real Broker on you know Super Bowl commercials or whatever. Like You're not gonna see any of that. Um, 100% of what would be the marketing fund um, for growing the brokerage at Real Broker goes back to their agents. They have revenue share as a way to thank their agents for bringing other agents into the company. You are not going to see um, a bunch of marketing out there for Real Broker because they want this company to grow from word of mouth, and it has. It is the fastest growing real estate brokerage in the entire world right now, and for good reason, but it has all been done word of mouth. There is no marketing fund. 100% of what would be that marketing fund goes back to their agents in the form of revenue share. So now that we are aware of this, how does revenue share work? Okay, so say you're a real estate broker, um, you're a seasoned agent, you've been, in the, you've been in the business for a while, or maybe you're in the process of getting your license, you just got your license, you're signing up for real broker, and you are filling out that independent contractor agreement, the ICA, um, and you see the little spot where you say sponsor, you put my name, Mariah Crawford. What does that mean? What happens next? Why do you do that? Let's talk about that. And I'm, I'm just using my name as an example. You can put whoever's name you want there. I do not care. I'm just using that as an example. It is a responsibility on me. I now have a vested interest in your success at the company because whenever you, uh, and, and by the way, the way, the way that this is set up at real estate brokerages is to where you don't make any more money by not having a sponsor. So if you were like, I'm going to leave it blank. I don't know if you can do that. I don't see why you would, but maybe you can. I'm honestly not sure. I'm not the person to ask, but even if you can leave it blank at real, I don't know why you would, because you do not, the amount of money you make from your commission does not change. If that makes sense. Your, uh, sponsor gets paid a portion of your commission, um, up until you cap they get paid a portion of your commission and that same amount gets taken out though, regardless of, you know, if you have a spot, whatever, like you don't, what I'm trying to say is you don't lose money by having a sponsor. So this doesn't cost you anything. Everybody at Real Broker has a 85-15 split until they cap. It is a $12,000 a year cap if you're not on a team. All the agents who you sponsor, you get a portion of their commission until they reach that $12,000 a year cap. And then they keep 100% of their commission when they cap them. I'm having a Zoom call later today with an agent at Real who she wants to go over um, video marketing. She knows I do a lot of video marketing in my business. We've seen great results from it. And she wants to, to have some tips and str strategize a little on how she can implement this into her business and um, just, just talk about it a little bit. So we're having a Zoom call. I love doing Zoom calls with agents. I'm always happy to do that. I had a text message last night from a really sweet agent across the country who I sponsor at Real. And she just had a handful of questions. And I, of course, am more than happy to answer them all for her, you know, to the best of my knowledge and ability. At Real Broker, yes, you still have your principal broker, okay? Every state has at least one principal broker. You can contact for any questions. There is a amazing support line. I contact them often and they help me with literally everything I need help with in minutes. It's amazing. But um, your sponsor is just another point of contact. It's another person who's in your corner. You're able to run ideas by. If you want some extra accountability, ask them for it. Like they're there um, to help you however you want. Now, this isn't required. Like a lot of the agents, we've uh, basically the way that they say what is a sponsor is the defin it's def the definition, I believe it's the first person you heard about the company from. So a lot of the people that we sponsor, they are crushing it, like selling more houses than we are, and we don't ever hear from them, and it's fine. They're awesome agents, and uh, 
you know, they just don't care to really have any help from their sponsor. And that's fine. I don't really contact my sponsor that much either. But if I was a brand new agent, I probably would be often because why wouldn't you take advantage of this? So everyone's in a different spot in their business and it's not like a required thing. Like you have to meet with your sponsor. Like that's not how it is at all. It's basically just the first person you heard about the company from and it doesn't cost you any more money to have than not to have. You're not saving any money if you don't have one and you still have your principal broker to contact, okay? You still have all these masterminds to join at Real Broker, all this training that you have access to, but it's like, why wouldn't you want this extra person in your corner? I know this is something that at my previous brick and mortar brokerage, we had a principal broker and she was amazing but we didn't have a sponsor. Like the principal broker was really the only like point of contact. So if there, there was no like extra person who had a vested interest in my success at the company, it was just her. So uh, while yes, your principal broker is amazing and it's an amazing uh, person to have in your corner, principal brokers are often real busy. Like they've, you're not the only agent they're managing. They've got a lot of agents and obviously your sponsor is other people they sponsored too. But like, I, I don't know. I'm kind of going off on a rant here and we have more to talk about so don't go anywhere we have some very important things to talk about a little bit further down in the video but i'm, I'm trying to just get this point across that it, there's no downside to this and i think that this is a really valuable thing to have um is a sponsor whether you are a new agent or not but especially if you're newer like how why wouldn't you want to have someone you can contact with ideas or you know ask questions um my agents the agents who i sponsor they text me often with questions. I'll voice text them back. I'll text them back. We'll, we'll hop, we'll schedule a FaceTime or a zoom call. And I genuinely, genuinely love it. I don't come at it from this standpoint of like, I'm above you or I'm your leader at all. I come at it from like, we are both at the same company. We are doing business together. Now we are collaborating. We are friends in the business. And that's really the standpoint. Now, obviously every relationship's going to look a little different because there are some agents that are like brand new agents and they're like, please mentor me, help me. And I'm happy to do that. But it, I don't know. I just don't want to paint the wrong picture. It's not this like I'm above you by any means. It is just the opportunity to get to know, collaborate with, reach out to and have other agents who are willing and happy to help you is amazing. And I'm really grateful for it. That was a very long rant, but my whole point I'm trying to make here is that it benefits this business model benefits both the agent who is being sponsored. Um, I benefit by having a sponsor. My sponsor is amazing and she's you know in another state and I'm very grateful to have her as my sponsor. And I also benefit by being a sponsor. So uh, every so that's my point I'm trying to make is that there's really no downside to this business model and I don't know why anyone wouldn't be down for this. Okay, so you bring someone into the company. They name you on the ICA as their sponsor. And from then on, when they have a closing until they cap, you get a portion of that commission. And then if they bring somebody to the company, that is your tier two. Once you have five, five producing agents, so you could have like 20 agents in your network, but only a few of them are producing. If you have five producing agents, that means they sell a certain number of houses. It's not a super high quota by any means, but say you have five producing agents, then your tier two is unlocked. And then you are making income from everyone who those people on your tier one make. And then you, and then you can unlock tier two and then three and then four. And like it, it really, the benefits are crazy. And the amount of money that some people are making from this revenue share model is insane and you probably wouldn't believe it but the potential is huge and at the end of the day it, it to me it's like the money aside the fact that it brings this collaborative spirit where like you get to have relationship with other agents this is something that for me before i joined real broker i was really honestly feeling kind of bored in the real estate space i'd been a full-time real estate agent since i was 18 and it's been, always been my passion, but I just was kind of like, okay, I've sold houses. I've had great years. I'm just kind of at a point where I'm like, just kind of going through the motions with it, I guess. And, uh, getting to, getting to be involved in this business model and getting to I don't, grow a network. But really what that means to me is build relationship with agents all over the country, be in communication with agents all over the country. It has filled my cup so much. And while my hope is to be a blessing to the agents I sponsor, 
I don't want to bug everybody and just be annoying because I know a lot of people don't need or want the help, but I want to be there if you have questions, if you want anything, like I am eager and happy to help is what I'm trying to say. Um, I want to be a blessing to the agents I sponsor, but I have been blessed by the agents that I get to sponsor. I can't say this enough. I don't see it as this thing where it's like, I'm your leader, I'm above you. Like, I'm happy to mentor you if that's the phase of your business you're in, but I really ultimately see it as like, I'm building friendships with people in the business around the world, um, around the country, and getting, you know, referral partners. We're referral partners now. I'm, we're doing business together. We're collaborating. We're masterminding. We're meeting it. Like, it's just fun and it's blessed me, which is what I'm trying to say. Not just making money from it, but the relationships. And it's really brought a like juice back into my business and a passion and excitement back into my business. So now that we've said all of that, now that we've said all that, um, there are many real estate brokerages that you might not even realize it, but they actually have this business model. Um, Keller Williams has a profit share. That's a very similar thing. Um, There's a good handful now of cloud-based brokerages that have this business model. And I said it before and I'll say it again. I really believe it is the model of the future. The fact that real estate brokerages are creating a way for real estate agents to, to make passive income while growing their business through helping other agents. Like I get paid when you succeed. That to me is like life giving and it's so much fun. And again, I said this before, but like I would do it for free and I did do it for free for a very long time. I've had this uh, YouTube channel talking to agents, sharing advice, and I've taken calls with agents like my own time for free because I genuinely love it. And the fact that it's something you can get paid to do now is and get paid really good money and get paid passively and live anywhere and like travel and it's just lit, okay? So with that being said though, we need to talk about something very important. What separates us at Real Broker from every other company I have seen that has this model. At Real Broker, they really want to protect the culture. They do not want it to become a culture where it is recruitment heavy, where it gets a bad taste in your mouth because of the recruiting. Like they see the value in this business model. They see how much it can change agents' lives. The sponsor and the sponsee both. Like it benefits everybody and they see that. They really don't want it to turn into something where it gives them a bad reputation because their culture is one of the most important things about this company. It's one of the things that really sets it apart from all these other brokerages and it's the biggest reason why I chose Real over any other brokerage that offers this, just got a text, business model, okay? So let's just, let's just like, just, let me just jog my memory. Um, this is off the top of my head, but let me just jog my memory and in, in, in review in my brain some of the things that we are not allowed to do at Real Broker that separate us and help protect this culture from other real estate brokerages with a similar model. I'm not allowed to say I'm starting a mastermind only for agents in my network. I'm allowed to start a mastermind and I'm allowed to invite all the agents in my network, but I'm not allowed to say only people in my network can come. Well, I'm not allowed to name that, you know, I'm not allowed to have a name, be like, we're the whatever network name. Uh, They don't want that culture. They don't want silos being created because they really, their whole motto is like one real, one culture. They want it to be a company where if you're at the company, if you're a real broker and I'm not your sponsor, you can still ask me a question. You can still reach out to me and you can, agents do, and I help and I do help and I'm happy to. That's part of their culture. So if there is an agent who is not in my upline at Real Broker uh, and they're doing something really cool and I wanna hear more about what they're doing, I can reach out to them and they're not going to say, like at other companies, if you follow my, if you catch my drift, they're not going to say, we're not going to help because you're not in our whatever group. You're not in my downline. You're not in my network. They don't even like the word downline here at Real. Like we're not really supposed to use that word because it's not what it is. Uh, it, it's a community and it's one company, if that makes sense. So it's, they want to stay away from that. They want it to be like, oh, I'm not in Mariah's network. I didn't join her at Real, but I can still have the freedom to reach out to her and she'll still help me. Cause we, the way that they have created this company is to where if, if you succeed, and you're not in my network, I still succeed because it benefits the stocks that I have at Real Broker. It bene- like There are benefits to me 
uh, just the way that they have set it up. I benefit when you succeed at real, even if you're not in my network. So I want you to succeed even if you don't join with me, okay? That is the culture at real. They want to protect, that's one thing. And then this, another thing is, if you read their independent contractor agreement at Real Broker, the ICA, there's a lot of things we're not allowed to do. Um, that other brokerages that have this business model do that have given them a bad reputation. Let me just name a few more things. We are not allowed to cold call agents. We're not allowed, we're not allowed to cold text, cold DM agents trying to recruit them to real broker. If I have a friend who I previously already have a relationship with, I can call her and be like, Hey, let's talk about this. I want to share this information with you, whatever. But if you don't know them, we are not allowed to do that. Like slimy, you know what I'm saying? Like we're not allowed to do that because that's not the reputation they want to build here. We are not allowed to throw an event and say this event is you know, a training. I'm going to tell you how to like, or how to get 10 leads in the next few months from video marketing. And then at the end of it or in the middle of it, just be like, but here's a pitch for real. Like we've seen other companies do. We're not allowed to do that. That's not the culture they're wanting to build here. There's just a whole, whole handful of things that at real broker, we aren't allowed to do because they want the culture to be one real broker, one real. They want that culture to be different. And it is different when we tell you I've been with the brokerage for a year and a half now and it is amazing. The culture is amazing and it's one of the things that I love so much about this company. So is it a multi-level marketing? Here's my thoughts on that. Okay guys, are you ready? The million dollar question, the thing that everybody wants to know, is it a multi-level marketing? What do I think? Okay, it is a real estate brokerage. My response after much thought and much mind changing, because I used to think that it was, is no. After being in this company myself, is no. It's not an MLM, guys. It's a real estate brokerage, okay? Their number one goal is to sell houses. They are a publicly traded company. And while they offer this model, the best thing I can compare this model to, because, okay, let me just explain a little background. I have heard, uh, because I've been at the company for a minute now, it hasn't been that long, but like I have heard many now people say, uh, many people who previously ran teams of hundred plus agents. Okay. Say that they are now at real broker and they either, they don't have that team anymore or maybe they're still running it, but they have large, you know, they have their network at revenue share instead of this big team, they're making way more money from it. It's way better, just like the logistics, like it just is so much smoother. It works out so much better. Same with people who even owned their own brokerages and it just the numbers make so much more sense being here. The numbers and and, and I just feel like the, the there's less babysitting, like yes, you're their sponsor, you're here to help people, but it's just different than being a team leader, you know? And the way that I see revenue share is I feel like it gives agents a way to uh, an outlet to experience many of the benefits of having a team, a very large team in some cases, because some of people's networks are very, very, very large and they're making very, very much money from it every month passively, which is very cool. It's a way to be able to get the benefits of having a large team, such as you get to do what you feel called to do, which I personally, I would not do this if I didn't feel called to it. I only want to do what I feel called to do and nothing else. Like that is it. If I don't feel called to do it, I'm not even going to entertain it for a second. I feel very called to do this at, at this point in my life right now. Um, and if you do, you get the benefits of mentoring other agents, watching their businesses grow. Like I've literally been able to sit on zoom calls with agents who are just starting their YouTube channels and wanting to do what we're doing and apply it to their market. And then I, and then I get to watch throughout their journey and now they're, they're killing it. I see them grow subscribers, which doesn't really matter because we're, we're not trying to, you don't need a bunch of subscribers to get business. We're trying to get business, not subscribers. But, but then I get to see them start to get clients from it. And like, and then I get to see the benefit. Like it's so much fun. And then I get checks from it when they get paid. Like it's a blast and it's something I do feel called to and I love and feel passionate about. So we're, you're able to have the benefits of the life-giving benefits of helping other people, mentoring other agents. Cause that should be where you're doing it from a sense of like, 
per helping people. You get to have relationship with and collaborate with other agents, have them in your corner, and, and, and you get to do have referral partners, like a lot of the benefits of having a team, while also having the benefits of having a team, which are the passive income. And I would argue you have even more passive income because you know if you run a large team, most of those agents aren't going to be selling a ton of houses. Like, it's just, it's amazing. You get the benefits of being a team leader with, and it's kind of like an extension of your team without actually having to be a principal broker and actually having to have a lot of the headache of a team leader. And these people, these agents that you're in relationship with, you're helping, you're collaborating with, they can be all over the country, US and Canada, hopefully, hopefully other areas too. Uh, I'm about to spend four months or so in Mexico and I love that country and the people so, so much. I'm really, so much. I'm really hoping real someday very soon goes to Mexico. If they do, somebody please let me know. If, you've, if you're with real and you've heard any talk about that happening, please let me know because I will be there. I will be flying there and it will be so much fun. But th like, I'm just saying, like I do think there's so much room for expansion, but the US and Canada right now, you get to have a relationship with agents and you know, I get to have a relationship with agents in states I've never been to and I get to hear about their market and like, it's just a lot of blessings is what I'm trying to say. So that's all everybody. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I love you. You're beautiful. I hope you have a beautiful day. Uh, the sun is shining. And uh, if you have questions about joining Real, if you're thinking about joining Real and you're like, I don't know if it's the right fit for me or not, shoot me a email. Let's get a Zoom call on the schedule. I do Zoom calls often with agents who are considering joining Real and who are with Real, and I love it. If you wanna talk a little bit more about it, send me an email, my email's in the description. And if you just wanna know a little bit more about Real, if you want more questions answered, uh, I have videos where I go in depth on the commission splits, the numbers, the fees, all those things you need to know, plus why I myself joined after saying I never ever would. That story and just more is in a playlist called Real Brokerage Explained. I'll put that in the description or go find it on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything because I come on here every week with new videos and hit the thumbs up button if you grab value from this video and I'll see you guys soon.